How can I start financial care planning in my bullet journal? Hello, beautiful. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin. If you are new here on this channel, we focus a lot on what is a bullet journal and how to bullet journal. If you have no idea what a bullet journal is, I just did a blog post on it not too long ago, and I will walk you through exactly what it is and how to set one up. This video, however, is part three of the three part series on different self care bullet journal spreads that you can use. I've done one on mental health, physical health, and now financial self care. So if that is something that you're interested in, just keep on watching. Here's just a little quick view of the stationary supplies that I'm using. As always, it will be linked in the description box down below for you if you're interested in checking that out. The first financial self-care tip that I have for you is to build an emergency fund. And I'm going to be showing you with a specific emergency fund tracker. The first question that I would ask myself if I was watching this video is what exactly is an emergency fund and why would I even want to have one for my financial self-care? An emergency fund is a buffer amount of money that's going to just allow you a bit of flexibility when an emergency happens. So let's say you've lost your job, you might have some medical issues, or there's been a natural unforeseen disaster that has occurred. And having a bit of money saved away on the side for these events are really going to help just ease your mind a little bit. I am dividing this spread into four little boxes across and then six boxes down. Each of these boxes are four dots across and two up. And I added a little bit of money signs in the center just because these are the bills that we are saving up for. Once an amount is saved, you just color it in and it shows you a visual representation of exactly how much money you have saved away for your emergencies. Okay, now the question then really becomes how to calculate your emergency fund. When you are doing financial self-care, you have to keep in mind that it is all dependent on you, your lifestyle, and where you're at in this stage of life. How to calculate an emergency fund, I would recommend going back through any bank statements that you have, credit card, if you have multiple credit cards, multiple bank accounts, pull all of those out and go through and see all of the necessary expenses that you would need to have in your life to be able to live month to month. Things like rent or mortgage expense, groceries, utilities, car payments, car insurance, health insurance, maybe you need internet for your kids to go to school, that would be some Thing that would be on this list. Cell phone, medical, it will depend on who you are and your stage in life. Now this timeline section I've just had a start and finish. That $2,000 represents a one month so I'm going to multiply it by three to get $6,000 and I want to save the $6,000 over 24 months. So how much do I need for every single month? $250 and that is where my little money card on the left came from. So every single month, I'm going to be filling in one of those money cards. I only put in three months, but if you want to save more than that, I definitely would encourage you to do that. How to make this happen? How can I have this financial self-care and plan it out for me with this emergency fund? Maybe you are the person who is an out of sight, out of mind. So having an automatic transfer out of your account every single time you get paid. Then you can also have things maybe to reduce non-necessary expenses in the short term. Other things could be removing the spending money from your account. Maybe it's too tempting having it in there and just pulling it out would be something you could do as well. Spread number two in this financial plan with me self-care trackers is to track your spending. And I'm going to be doing this through an expense tracker. I've shown a few of these on my channel before when I'm doing different plan with me videos. And one thing about expense tracking is it's going to give you a better representation of what's going on in your money journey, where you're spending your money, but it also is going to help ensure that no mistakes are being made in your account. How I've sectioned this off here is date, description, location, amount, and then the account that is coming out of. And at the bottom, I'm breaking down different categories that my money could come out of 
car, home, medical, personal, groceries, and miscellaneous. Here is the exact spread from my financial bullet journal that I use to break down my categories and show exactly where my money is going so there's no confusion on what expense goes where. I recommend having something like that in your financial care journal as well if you are interested in doing something like that. In the center, I am just pulling out these lines here to have more of a visual representation of exactly where our money is going. I know some people are more visual, that is definitely me, and I like having a visual for my financial self-care. And on the right-hand side, I have exactly how much I want to budget for the month. So for the top, I write down the expense up at the bottom, then I just end up filling it out. Here's just an example of February 1st, I have rent. The location that or the category it's going in is in the house. It's coming out of my checkings account and $900 is being spent. So I'm filling in $900 here out of the $950 that I had budgeted in this category for the month. If you are not the type of person who likes filling your expense trackers out right away, that's okay. You can do it at the end of the month as well. But maybe this is something that you wouldn't find useful. I would still recommend doing a monthly check-in. Here's where you're gonna look at your bank accounts, your credit cards, and you're gonna ask yourselves the following question. Were there any double charges in my account? Are there any unfamiliar charges? Things maybe that you've made, but that you forgot about? Or your account might have been compromised and you need to call up your bank and say, hey, something's going on. Were there any overcharges? or potentially any subscriptions that you meant to cancel but forgot. These little reflective questions that you can ask yourself specifically about your bank account are gonna help you manage your money a little bit better and know what's going on. With the reflection questions as well, you can do these out loud, write them down, just simply in your head, but it gives you a good little base point to your money awareness as well for financial self-care. Do you remember all of your purchases and did they provide you joy over the short term or the long term? Maybe ask yourself, do you regret any of these purchases or did you really have the money for everything? What patterns or trends did you notice and was your budget categories correct? When it comes to spread ideas for your finances, sometimes just having this quick little check-in or checkbox list helps. Number three for the different self-care trackers is to pay your bills on time. And I'm going to be showing you with monthly bills first. Here is just a monthly calendar that I'm going to be setting up to provide a visual of the different payment schedule we have going on every single month with different bills that we will need to be paying. Now, all of the bills can sometimes get a little bit confused and jumbled in my head at least, and having them written down makes it a little bit easier to know when they need to be paid by and how much money they need to be paid. If a bill is missed, you do end up paying things like late fees or let's say you on your credit card and you don't pay your credit card off right away, you're paying interest for those late charges. At the bottom, I just ended up breaking it down to be bills, date, the account that it's coming out of, and then the amount. Now, your finances may look different than the example that I'm putting down here, but the best thing to know and what I have learned from financial care is to always adjust the spreads to help suit your need a little bit better. Personally, for me, I like to pay a bill the day that it is charged. However, there are things like due dates that you can extend that bill to be paid by. So you could add in another column like bill due, just to give you a better idea of exactly when the money needs to be paid by. I have the account for checking and credit card since those are the two that I use, but if you use checks, that would be another category you could put down in your account. Now, taking that information from the bottom, I'm then going to be filling it into my monthly calendar. And because I like to have things color-coded, I did end up grabbing a Tombow brush pen and filling in the color blue for things coming out of my checkings account and then a light gray for the things coming out of my credit card. Now, if you're a beginner to financial self-care or finance tracking in general, you have these things called yearly bills. And I put bills in quotation marks this time because they're not something that you would necessarily think of as an expense or a yearly bill because they're not things like a cell phone bill 
but they do happen throughout the year and will need to be considered when you're creating different financial trackers within a finance journal. I broke the page down into 12 different boxes, one to represent every single month. Here is where I'm going to be putting in all of the events that go through the year. Things like New Year's or Valentine's Day, maybe Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever you end up paying for for different events. But also when you are planning out and figuring out how to record your finances using your journal, make sure that you also consider things like birthdays or you have a wedding or a camping trip other events that will happen throughout the year that you will need to consider in your budgeting or your financial awareness throughout the year. Things like tax season is something I always seem to forget about, so having it just written down for me knowing that it's in April makes it a little bit easier for me personally. The last thing that I'm going to be showing you is how to budget in your bullet journal. Now I know this is not the most glamorous thing to talk about, but I'm first showing you a visual breakdown of where exactly the money will be going throughout the month. Creating a budget helps you just get an entire picture of your finances and it's going to help you to be able to maneuver different bills and your money that you want to spend around those bills. I'm breaking this page down into three different categories, bills, personal, and savings. This top one here, I have the bills category and each of these subsections are going to be different subcategories of what a bill could be. Same thing with personal, same thing with savings. And because by now you might know I like things color coordinated a little bit, all of those subcategories are getting a different color just to make it look a little bit nicer and easier to reference. Knowing where to start with financial bullet journaling and financial self-care really does start with this big picture. Here I'm just giving an example of bills consuming 50% of my income. Categories, things like house, car, food, and then each of those categories then get broken down into subcategories. So for house, I have rent and utilities, for car, insurance and gas, for food, groceries, all of those bills that are going to incur every single month. For personal, yours may look different than mine. Under technology, I had a cell phone. If worse came to worse and I had to get rid of my cell phone, I absolutely could. But maybe that wouldn't be functional for you for a job, so it might go under the bills category. Then I have things like subscriptions like Netflix and Spotify. Any entertainment that I would have through the month or travel desires would also go in personal for me. Savings is the last section here and I would want to budget about 20% of my income to go into savings. Things like short term goals and long term goals. Short term we've talked about building that emergency fund at the very beginning of the video but maybe you're going back to school in the fall. That could be a short term goal as well. Long term looks at things that are happening re to five years or longer in the future. Things like buying a house for me or retirement. Those would be some categories as well that I would wanna consider. Just ensuring that I have my basic financial needs covered in the future by paying myself first. Last but not least is more of a monthly overview and I absolutely love this spread. I use it in my own financial bullet journal and it gives me a really good idea of what's happening in the month and where my bills and fun money really is going. And do I really have enough in my account to make all of the things that I want to have happen possible? Now, the one thing that I want to say about financial self-care is that it might not be the most fun thing to do or something that you feel a little bit nervous or not excited about. And sometimes that just is the case with self-care. You do something now that might feel a little uncomfortable, like looking at your finances and reevaluating things, kind of budgeting everything out to make your future life a little better. Same thing happens with working out. <laughs> I don't always want to do a workout, but I know that I'll feel better in the end. So I'm sectioning things off like important dates, bills, future events, and big savings. In my important dates, I'm adding in my paychecks, bills, we've chatted about future events. This is a section where I look at the next three months and what I have upcoming and how much do I have saved. So for March, let's say I need $200 and I only have $100 out of the 200 saved. Well, I know for me, I want to make sure I have 100% of that money money covered with the next month. So I'm going to put money aside to make sure that each of those categories are filled for the next three months upcoming. Big savings, things like emergency, house, retirement, I'm going to plop in certain money that I want to have happen over the month. Trying to make sure that I target
target about 20% of my income, connecting the last general budget spread to this one. I am color coding in the two days that I would then get paid, as well as the bills. So paycheck number one is covering my bills for my cell phone, my utilities, and my internet. Paycheck two is covering my Netflix, my Spotify, but also rent from the 1st of March. Even though that it's a February paycheck, it's covering my March bill because there's no March paycheck before March 1st. So let's keep those things in mind when you're trying to figure out exactly where your money is going. Now the bottom I'm ending up putting in my first paycheck because rent is taking up a huge chunk of my second one. Then you can go through and you can see how much money you have left for things like groceries, gas, as well as fun money because it's really important to have the fun money planned out as well for financial self-care. Just a quick reminder, here's what we went through today, making sure we build that emergency fund, track our spendings, pay your bills on time, as well coming up with a budget. Here is just a little quick flip through of what we did today together. I really hope that this helps you in your financial self-care journey and answers the question that yes, you can use a journal for financial self-care. If you've watched up until this point of the video, make sure to put a blue emoji down in the comments below. Well, that is it. Thank you, Kendall, for subscribing and leaving a comment down below. I'm really glad that you found last week's video on the physical self-care trackers to be helpful and really informative for you. If you haven't already seen that video, I'll just have it linked here as well in the description box down below for you. And while you're down there, make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment down below. It really does help support the channel to grow and I will see you next week with another video. Bye!